Okay, so I want to start out with an example. We're going to use fork and knife inventory, which is in uh, one of my sections. And um, I'm making up all the numbers here, so I haven't, uh, I haven't done their homework for them. Um, but essentially the problem, and I'll say it really simply, is that uh, restaurant owners waste inventory because of poor prediction and inventory management. So their solution, just really briefly, is that they're going to have some sort of cloud-based uh, software. It's going to be an inventory management system tailored to restaurants and and we'll just assume that if a restaurant uses this and they're going to waste a lot more or waste a lot less money because they're going to buy the right amount of stuff. So uh, they've set their price at $39 a month. So that's their revenue uh, for each customer, $39 a month. And then uh, they've got some costs they have to think about. So they've got to actually build out the, the software. So right here I said, oh, that's going to cost $100,000. And again, I'm just making up numbers for the purpose of this example. Uh, they might have an office and staff for two years. Let's say over two years, that's going to cost them $300,000. Uh, and then there's going to be some marketing expenses. I just put a number up there, but it, what you'll notice is that the uh, building the software and the office and staff, those are fixed costs. The marketing is going to be variable. Um, and that's because it doesn't matter how many customers I have uh, building the software, the office and staff for two years, those are going to stay the same. Um, while marketing is going to change depending on, you know, hopefully the more more marketing I do, the more customers I have, we're going to treat that as a variable cost. Um, so now if I'm going to calculate the lifetime value of a customer and the cost of acquiring a customer, I need to make some assumptions. So lifetime value of a customer, uh, I take that $39. Now I have to make an assumption about how many months each customer is sticking around. Uh, for this example, I made the assumption that a customer would stick around for 12 months. If a customer sticks around for 12 months, that's $468 for one customer. That's how much I earn from one customer if they stay for 12 months. Uh, now, for the cost of acquiring a customer, let's say I make some more assumptions, and my assumptions are, are underlined in orange here, um, that each customer I'm going to spend about $20 on digital advertising and then I'm going to pay a salesperson $100. So I'm, I'm going to go with the commission-based system. So each sale the salesperson makes uh, gets them $100. So we've got this, this uh, cost of acquiring customer of $120. Now, is $120 good or bad? It depends on the lifetime value of a customer. If I've got a high lifetime value, as in this case $468, it's fine to spend $120 per customer. Um, if my lifetime value of a customer were only... $90, uh, then I'd be in a lot of trouble um, if it cost me $120 to get them. So again, the calculations on this are not hard. Um, what's hard are the assumptions underneath. So where can we come up with uh, the numbers for our assumptions? Um, well, you can look at comparisons. So look at other companies. What are other companies charging in terms of commission? Um, you can look at other companies you know, that, that use digital marketing. So what's the cost of acquiring a customer if you're using Facebook? What's the cost of acquiring a customer for search engine optimization? There's lots and lots of blog posts out there. There's lots of data out there where you can find comparable costs for similar companies or similar industries. Um, or you can run your own tests. Uh, go and talk to potential customers. Say, hey, you know, let me explain this product. How likely would you be to buy it? Um, you can run Facebook ads. Go ahead and spend 20 bucks. Each of you chip in five bucks and, and run an ad and figure out how many people actually click on your ad. And maybe you can link that ad to a landing page and run a survey and see, okay, if people do land on our page, you know, how excited are they about our product? What information can we get from them? You can also run surveys with potential customers. And I've said this in class, but I would encourage you to um, put say the survey, the, the wording on the survey is probably best to say, if you're trying to figure out price, for example, is to figure out how likely would you to be to buy this product if it costs $39 a month? Not at all likely to very likely. And then you can change how much it costs um, and, and you can start to see uh, how likely people are to buy your product at different price points. That's better than just asking, you know, how much do you want to spend for this product? Because nobody knows how to answer that question. Um, so again, big picture here with with fork and knife, um, we've you know we've got a, we've got a restaurant you know a problem where restaurant owners waste inventory. We've got a solution where we've got a cloud based inventory management software. We're making an assumption that people will be willing to pay thirty nine dollars a month. 
Uh, we've done a bunch of homework, we're going to pretend, on building the software. We know exactly how much that costs. We've talked to people. We've gotten good information. We've looked up office space. We've figured out what we're going to have to pay our staff. Um, and then we know we've got some marketing costs. Uh, and, and we've got the lifetime value of the customer. We've got the cost of acquiring customer. And again, in each one of these cases, uh, we've done a bunch of homework to figure out what the best number is uh, under you know for each of these assumptions not the right number but the best number again guesses are fine estimates are fine I don't want wishes so I don't want you to get up there and say we wish it would cost us twenty dollars to digital advertising that's that's not okay what instead you need to say is we estimate that it will cost us you know hundred and twenty dollars per customer here's why we think this is a reasonable estimate because we have these comparisons we've run our own tests We've talked to people, um, so hopefully that helps with the lifetime value and the cost of acquiring customer. I'll come back and I'll talk about uh, break-even and a few of the other calculations that are useful.